Well, we got about an inch and a half of rain yesterday. I'm checking the ground to see how squelchy it is, but I think I can still get on at least this field, maybe the small one down there. Um, chance of showers Wednesday, it's Sunday right now. So I think still being early, but having much finer grasses in these fields, I'm just gonna do a small leisurely batch, try to knock these down and take some pressure off myself uh, for the next hopeful good weather stretch, whenever that is to finish up everything on this end of town. So we'll see how it goes. Boy, that's certainly not nothing for five, uh, 521. Well, it's almost three o'clock. We've had a nice mix of sun and wind, some clouds, but this is already starting to dry down. The top's a lot drier than the bottom. It's really thin up here. It's much thicker in the middle of the field. So, because we're on a little bit of a comp uh, compressed time frame, I'll flip it and fluff it again. This field actually gets, this one and the one down there get um, really late sun, so. I have another three hours of dry time after this anyway. Well, when it's sunny out, this feels encouraging, but there's a heck of a lot of cloud sun hide and go seek going on. So I don't know, there's a lot of still thick stems in this, but they're drying down quite a bit and there's a lot less of them in this. The majority of this grass is pretty fine. So I'm getting a little frustrated with the lack of uh, sun in the forecast. We'll see how tomorrow goes and maybe see how Wednesday goes. Well, there are tiny little bits of rain showers popping up all around us. They kind of built that into the forecast last minute. Tiny blob coming this way, but it's hard to tell if it's actually turning into anything. But my plan was to rake this late afternoon. I was hoping it was going to get more sun than this. But there's a lot of dry down that's happened. It's actually feeling pretty good and crispy. And I want to get it up off the ground. There's enough wet spots that uh, get some little bit of breeze flowing through it. Well, that's the blob. Nothing yet. So I'm just going to keep raking until we get some rain. Hopefully not. than I was expecting. We could just get some sun, see what tomorrow brings. We can only hope today stays like this. Really nice sun. They're threatening another tiny chance of showers later this afternoon and quote unquote partly cloudy. Um, but so far so good. I feel justified for getting this up in windrows. The ground dried a lot. What got flopped up did dry. Underneath is quite damp, um, a bit soggy. If I wasn't in a rush, I'd probably let this sit and re-rake it once but I'm desperately trying to see if I can get this in today. So I am going to lightly tet it back out, maximize dry down exposure. This, this stuff still has to go a little ways today. <laughs> Boy, for two forecasted days that were supposedly going to be identical yesterday and today. What two different days. I don't think the sun has been behind a cloud once today. This stuff has come really far. And uh, yeah, we're going to go hook up the baler and come put this together. The one down there 
has two of the outside windrows that <laughs> are in the shade till like 2 or 3 p.m. It's just ridiculous. So I'll save those for last. They'll probably be heavy. But over here, this is the, the heavy shade line in the morning. Checking this windrow as I walk up it. Everything feels great. Here's the next field in line. It's shot up quite a bit. We've got orchard grass heads everywhere, but lots of finer grasses too. I'll say it again, this is a good week or so, or even two ahead of where we normally see right now for May 24th. So we're gonna get a storm rolling through later this afternoon. And then my plan is to lay this piece down tomorrow and maybe give it a good four days um, of good, good sun. <laughs> there were some deer in here that Moose finally saw it. <laughs> so I got to be careful of fawns when I mow this. Oh, and he's pooping. This first field is way on its way to uh, springing back, though. Week and a half. It's going to be a while yet. <laughs> I can't even think about being done with all the first cut and swinging back. So with any luck, this will be a, a bumper crop of mid-July second cut. I am glad that I'm not trying to bail that stuff we got in yesterday, today, though. It's awfully humid, pretty overcast. I think I am going to have to sort through it in the barn. A few of those bales are a little bit on the higher moisture side, but I think it would have been worse today, honestly. Well, we got 0.1 inch of rain yesterday and uh, barely anything to really soak the ground. We've got that lower field ready to go. And at the beginning of a five to seven day stretch of amazing sunny weather, <laughs> says everybody. We'll see if that holds up. It's barely 55 right now, but amazing sun and wind, and then supposed to get up into the 80s over the weekend into Memorial Day. So can't ask for much better than that. It's time to lay that down. So look at that new skinnier tire. It is perfectly aligned with the edge of the grass and not trampling it. This is just like the perfect, the perfect way to show how that old one, I don't know if you guys remember from last year, came out another several inches here and it would trample that whole edge. I don't know why Vermeer designed it like that, but uh, this, other than super wet ground where this might sink in, this seems to be the solution. adequately convey my relief at not finding a fawn down there. There was about four deer just every time I'm here I'm seeing them bounding all over the place there. I do love the quick change blade setup. The one thing that really puzzles me about the design of this is they have these blade stops under the turtle, under the disc here, to keep these blades from swinging a full 360. Uh, give them the benefit of the doubt, it's to prevent them from hitting something or, you know, I, it's funny, my other disc mower, they could just spin all the way around. But when you hit a rock, <laughs> it swings all the way back and hits that stop and totally wrecks the backside of the blade. 
So you hit a rock, you end up chewing up the front cutting edge and totally ruining the other one to even flip it over. I, it's a weird, weird design choice. Again, I love this mower. It's a couple of these weird things I've had to figure out between the tire and this, but yeah, I don't know what they're thinking there. Okay, about 10.30 in the morning on Saturday, day three. I mean, look at that dry down. <laughs> I, I shouldn't be surprised that we're in four day hay territory here, especially since the grass is a good week or two ahead of normal. But I was giving myself a full five days on the, on the calendar just in case I needed it due to stem moisture. Uh, I'll double check these, but I'm just gonna give this a really light fluff up tedding now, probably rake it mid afternoon and then likely bail it tomorrow i think at this point um the stretch right now of weather is looking good through thursday <laughs> today being saturday with only a maybe 30 percent chance of showers oh look at those gear go 30 percent chance of showers on friday so i think i'm going to try to tee myself up to move the mower in one of the tractors and lay down another field either late tomorrow or monday depending how this all goes to try to get on wednesday or thursday um, definitely breaking records here, getting through stuff on this end of town before June 1st. Never done that before. Um, oh man, <laughs> this stuff even looks bailable today, but stems, like I say, with this early stuff, but you know, it's, it's amazing seeing the difference in how the stems dry down, even over the last week and a half. There is, I mean, the, these are a lot more hollow. There's not, I mean, I'm sure there's still some moisture and sap in here, but Nothing compared to how difficult it was to dry out the up top area there. And we're barely a week and a half later. So stuff jumps. And again, I feel justified for getting going now. When I talk about being gentle with tedding late in the game, this is what I mean. RPM's way down. Just getting a really gentle aerating, drying out the understory even putting it in a pseudo windrow. People love to act with creative tenders, but it's all about how you use them. They're really the Swiss Army knife, especially here in the I don't know if anybody else does this too. On a re-tedding, I like to move over half a, uh, half a swath width. You know, the tenor does two two swaths at once basically you start to lose sight of them but then as the grass dries they show back up again and when i move over half a width it changes where the tether's lowest point of grabbing the hay is it means i'm grabbing stuff that i might have missed on the last time i tether it's the little things you know i know i've talked about it in other videos one of my strategies here is having two tractors of similar horsepower. So I've got the 165 and the 275. The 275 is definitely a bit beefier. It has bigger tires, etc. But two tractors that can comfortably run everything. And so I know a lot of folks have like a mowing bailing tractor and then a tedding raking tractor. And instead I alternate between the two. And it means I always have a backup also really spreads out the load and allows each tractor to do different types of work and different engine RPMs and I think really you know means that one tractor is not being constantly taxed at a heavy load and the other one's not just fluttering around. And the fuel economy between the two seems pretty simple. I've got the 165 to What a beautiful morning. In regard to the whole multiple tractor thing. <laughs> I do want to acknowledge the 135, um, which again, I love that little tractor to death. Um, but with it being gas, no power steering and steep hilly ground, no roll bar. It's one of those things where it, between operator fatigue and 
sun coverage and things like that, you know, I, I unfortunately tend not to use it as much for the active hay work, um, unless I'm on some flatter ground fields. So I do hope to get that running. But if I do have to move one of the two tractors uh, to the next set of fields with the mower, you know, it's possible I'll rake or re-rake with it. Um, but there, are, there, I did a, a fuel economy experiment between the 135 and the 165 when I first got the 165. Um, since at the time that was my only gas and only diesel that I was buying for the farm, I was able to calculate gallons per hour. And uh, the 165 was a little bit more efficient. Um, yeah, I can't quite remember the numbers. It was not quite one and a half times as efficient, but more fuel efficient despite being twice the horsepower. And that's diesel for you. Well, sometimes I drive myself a little crazy with trying to be efficient. Here I disconnected the 165 from the mower because I couldn't think of any scenario where I wouldn't just be raking with this tractor. But now with an amazing forecast, <laughs> the next thing I'm going to do after raking with the 275 is running off and mowing a few more fields. So hooking it back up. I should have known better. <laughs> That's all raked. It's actually one of my favorite fields to do, even though it's really odd and has lots of rocks. I always joke, it kind of feels like playing Mario Kart by the time you make one lap around, <laughs> expect to hear the, <laughs> hear the music play. But anyway, it's uh, really beautiful grass. And gosh, this stuff could even be ready to go today at the three day mark. Any stems I find, they're, they're crispy. There's really nothing in the inside. It's amazing how far ahead things are. You know, there, I've had years where I'm trying my first dicey early batch of hay around this same date range. And I think if, if I were to be <laughs> teleported and dropped into this field without knowing what date it was, I'd be guessing second week of June, maybe first week, but we're, we're ahead. So anyway, happy with that. I'm just going to go grab the 165, run a few miles away and mow a small set of three fields that are next in line. And with any luck, this forecast will hold out for the next five, six days. Um, not that I need that much for that. Yeah, I've, I've, I've never quite felt so relaxed, and so now I'm wondering what's going to go wrong. All right, next set of fields, about four acres. Got one, two small ones, and then a slightly bigger one through the trees. Grew quite a bit. That's all of it knocked down. If I was feeling rushed, I would indeed ted it out tonight because I've noticed enough benefits to that. But I'm not rushed yet. Uh, yeah, there's these nice wide swaths and I can ted this out first thing tomorrow before I re-rake the other field for baling. So anyway, we've got almost eight acres total on the ground between this and that, this and the stuff to bale tomorrow, hopefully. Staging wagons. I think I'm only gonna need three down here, but got a fourth if I need it. 
A lot of morning shade on this field in spots though. It's a little tough, but I'm not worried about it today. It's 9 a.m. Gonna go Ted the other stuff I mowed and then come back and rake this hopefully around 11. Putting in the last of last year's twine before jumping into this year's stuff. And it's funny, this is a random brand that co-op had. I've never seen it before. And I think I just realized it's a pun, maybe. The one advantage to having the thrower reservoir way back here makes a nice shelf for the knife while doing this. Tell you what though, if you don't already do this, your shins will thank you. Just take a tennis ball and cut a slit in it. I have dramatically less shin scars now. was bailing along and then smelled something awful <laughs> and the uh god this thrower belt walked its way all the way off to this side why <laughs> oh it's frustrating that's the brand new one and it had them tracking nice and centered i don't know what changed well that right there is the problem that bearing is totally shot that explains <laughs> why the belt tracked to this side because it suddenly got a lot shorter Oh boy. Well, as good luck has it, I actually have a spare bearing and even the flanges from a number of years ago when I thought I was having issues on a different one and wasn't. So I ordered it and had it as a spare. Not super hopeful about a field repair for today. If I was under the gun with weather, I would uh, I would just pop the flywheel off of this thing. And um, I not pop the flywheel, pop the, <laughs> pop the belt off the flywheel and uh, just bail onto the ground. But um, in fact, this this, number 70 thrower has a feature i've never even used which you can unpin this pivot the thrower up and drop out the bottom um i don't know i would almost just assume as soon uh widen the thing up and just push the bales out but anyway if i was in any kind of weather crunch bailing it onto the ground would be what i would do but i'm not so we'll see what kind of shape this thing is in i'm a little nervous about the shaft being scored and uh not being at all clean to get off of there so we'll see Actually, it's good to know for future reference, <laughs> taking off the, the belt here is actually is a lot easier. So if I ever have to bail onto the ground, a simple spring, <laughs> get it popped off, get it off the drive drive pulley, and then thrower's not working. Well, I got both flanges disconnected, and there's a lot of pivot room. I'd love not to take the pulley off the other end of that shaft, but we'll see what happens. You know how it goes. You try to take apart as little as possible, and before you know it, you've got an onion project. Well, that's a no-go in the Allen wrench. I'm not surprised. I need to get some PB Blast to soak that. My dreams of not taking this apart too far are starting to, to fall apart. Onion project. I think I found the problem. You're only allowed to have one nerdy decal per baler. I overdid it. Critical mass. Something had to go. Well, I figured that out. You had to take off that shield anyway to do it, so... Yeah, look at this bearing. Pretty, pretty smoked, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I need to loosen up that set screw. Ooh, uh, PB blast anyway. Maybe heat. We'll see. Well, 140-ish bales in the barn. I don't know if there's another 50. There might be 50 left. 
Well, I've been at it for almost three hours this morning and I've made, I think, zero progress other than cleaning up some of the broken stuff. Uh, heat, PB blast, and bearing puller yielded nothing on this. In fact, I dented up that and um, really marred up the, the center end of the bearing puller, which unfortunately I was borrowing from a friend who was borrowing from a friend. So I need to replace that for them. So <laughs> I'm at an impasse for right now. Um, so drop it on the ground we go. Anyway, off to go Ted the other field, come back, bail this, got a customer coming to get pick it up off the ground. So um, that's convenient. And yeah, like I said, there's probably 50 or 60 bales here, maybe. Um, but the other four acres, uh, that's gonna probably all have to go on the ground too. So that's gonna be fun. Break with the 135. It definitely does a nice job. Runs really well right now. But like I've said, no power steering, <laughs> constant throttle adjustments, and uh, no canopy. You know, maybe I'm just getting spoiled, but sustainability and not getting too fried. <laughs> Be important. All right, ready to go on this stuff. I had to take the hitch out because that was getting just enough in the way of this. And I didn't want to risk bales coming out and getting jammed against the thrower and breaking something. So anyway, once I'm underway and know it's working well, I'll probably pivot it so that way it's kicking them out slightly to the left. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So my plan, about four acres here, my guess is maybe 300 bales, but it'd be nice if there's a little more than that, but this is awfully thick. So yeah, but dropping everything on the ground and being a little bit short on labor, um, I'm gonna split this into two days worth of baling because we've got the forecast for it. Well, that's progress anyway. Oscillating tool to the rescue. Totally chewed through the two blades that I had, especially because that bearing is awfully hard. So. Uh, We'll get two more of those tomorrow and go to Hampshire Tractor, which thankfully has uh, another couple or some bearings and another couple collars for me. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, anyway, got to go re-rake what I have and drop some more on the ground today, but that's that's progress. <laughs> Stressors aside, there's something nostalgic about doing this the old school way. I think I'd be feeling a lot different if the forecast was different, but grateful for the opportunity to be able to drop them on the ground and have people come pick up out of the field. 
could be worse. All right, we've got 51 on this little field. So that makes about 50 bales out of three quarters of an acre. Oh, I got to do the math on that. We're not at full yield, but we're above half. Well, made 177 today. Did the, the middle smallest field, leaving the one on the far end of those trees for tomorrow, and left a few of the outside windrows on the bigger field. So uh, I haven't quite crunched the numbers on, on yield yet, because fields aren't quite done, but I've got somebody coming to pick up 60 in a little bit, and then somebody coming tomorrow morning for up to 120. I'll tell you what, I do already miss having a kicker to get bales off of slightly wet fields. We haven't had rain in two weeks here but there's still some more ground moisture here. <laughs> and the sides of these bales in the ground, a little damp in spots. So this is a lot, it's just stupid extra work, but I've got about a half an hour to kill before the first customer gets here. Just gonna tip these all up on edge and no sense trapping moisture on someone buying right off the field. Doing it the old fashioned way. Home stretch. One hand. Action cam. Yeah. I'm getting tired, out of shape. Well, got 120 on there anyway. 120 bales tarped for someone to pick up tomorrow morning. It's kind of satisfying to have them all stacked, but <laughs> forgot how much work that was. Well, hallelujah, only took two carbide blades to get through this damn thing, but that's off. So now I've just got to clean this, clean this up and see about getting the new bearing back on. Well, I think I'm paying for being a little overly confident here. This is the field I only tetted twice. Did once on the second day, once on the third day, and raked it late that third day. And the underside of these rows has some really too green, still too too wet material. Well, not wet, but too, too alive and green, even going into day five here. So, God, I should have hit this at least once more on day two or day three or something. So I'm teasing these back out because I've got people coming to buy this off the field today. I'll see how it does in the next couple hours. But that's frustrating. Look at that color difference of what I'm spreading out. It's beautiful. I just don't think I could fail it in an hour like I was planning. I know, being a little bit rough on the dry stuff, I get it. The alternative is sending someone home with green hay. Well, today so far is a case study in the difference between doing everything right and doing everything you can, which is something I talk about a lot. By rights, I'm doing everything right. I should not have had to tad anything back out, just a simple re-rake and bale. Um, but you know, as a hay farmer selling exclusively to other people, standing there swearing up and down I did everything right and I had a bum batch of hay come out doesn't do much good so you know I yeah if <laughs> if I was in more of a time crunch this would be a different story but I'm not so I'm doing everything I can and that's teasing apart some windrows with the tether giving it more time probably flopping these windrows over one more time because the ground's still kind of damp over there <laughs>
Alrighty, another 97 in today. Um, a little bit in the barn, someone home with folks, another 30 tarp for someone tomorrow. From these four acres, that gives us just about 75 bales an acre. So yield is coming up. I think last year on these fields, I got 80 bales an acre, and that was the second week of June. Right now it's May 31st. So you have a little bit of unsettled weather and some maybe showers or rain coming Friday, Saturday. That's a welcome change of pace for me. <laughs> Seven day hay stretch in May is pretty crazy. Um, you know, I could have gotten more done if the thrower hadn't broken, but made progress and uh, hope to spend the next few days getting this cleaned up and back together and running in that way. The next weather stretch we get, we can be back in full steam. Uh-oh, I hope I didn't polish that up too well. Just use some emery cloth on it. Okay, that was entirely too easy. What gives? Well, I have it back together and hand spinning it. I've gotten the belts as centered as I can. The new bearing seems fine. Nice and shiny in there. So let's fire this thing up and see. Well, the belt needs some further adjustment, but I'll be damned. Might be back in the bale throwing business. 